So, so the last uh, speaker tonight before we move on to uh, the panel is uh, Denise Williams, who is a consultant paediatric oncologist that many of you will know who's based at Cambridge University Hospitals here and co-leads the Kampala Cambridge Paediatric Cancer Health Partnership, which is a partnership with Uganda Cancer Institute. So each year an estimated 400,000 children and adolescents uh, develop cancer and in, in high-income countries, the five-year survival rates for children with cancer exceed 85%. But in low- and middle-income countries, the survival rate drops to less than 30%. Patients from across Uganda and surrounding East African countries across the paediatric oncology services uh, access the paediatric oncology services provided at the Uganda Cancer Institute. And this partnership is focused on improving the care of those children accessing the services as well as the survival rates. So Denise is going to describe how this reciprocal partnership in supporting pathology, diagnostic pathways, improving the safety of prescriptions and administration of chemotherapy, as well as strengthening aspects of supportive care, including creating family education resources to help children and their families understand their cancer diagnosis, treatment and next steps. Denise, thank you. Thank you, Sue. <clears throat> so the um, Cambridge Uganda um, Pediatric Oncology Partnership, how did it start? Well, in 2019, um, a, a group of people from UCI came to, to visit um, Cambridge University Hospital really to look to develop a research partnership between Cambridge University and the UCI. And one of the people who came was Joyce Kambugu, who was the head of pediatric oncology at um, UCI. And she asked when she was here whether she could tour the um, paediatric oncology department to meet the staff, to meet um, the, the wider multidisciplinary team, look at our procedures, policies, etc. And at the end of her visit, she asked whether we would be prepared to develop a clinical partnership. So in January 2020, I went out to um, Kampala. Uh, we had just a week there and visited the outpatient department. Mm -hmm. No, sorry, yeah the outpatient department, the inpatient department, and, and then met a number of people involved in the supporting services, such as pathology, radiotherapy, um, infection control, etc. We looked at lots of the paperwork that was, um, was being used, the, their prescribing practices, their pharmacy support, and there were definitely many uh, challenges identified along the patient pathway. However, I think it's really important to recognise what fantastic strengths and areas of great practice out there, some of which we, were, we brought back to um, Cambridge. Firstly, the um, nurses, a really cohesive, very committed group of nurses, small in number. All of them had a, um, a quality improvement project that they ran alongside their very onerous um, um, rotors. They chaired uh, and run, ran a nurse's clinical symposium once a month. It was chaired beautifully by one of the lead nurses there. The doctors were told to keep their mouths shut. Um, <laughs> but it was really very good. And what really impressed me was that they felt that for improvement to happen, everybody had to be involved in that improvement. And therefore, one of the nurses said to me, where there's a will, there's a way. And that's the, the, the kind of vision they put over to us while we were there. They had a very functional multidisciplinary team meeting that happened once a week. Great engagement, robust and very respectful discussion. But of course, only a tiny percentage of patients were able to be discussed um, at that meeting. They had excellent family support. So on site was the Ugandan Children's Cancer Foundation, um, which provided both funding, pastoral um, um, support for patients and families who are actually at UCI, but also they run a very impressive educational program which goes into secondary schools. And that's been running for some time now and has shown enormous benefit in terms of community um, understanding of cancer as a whole, not just children's cancer. There's also the Blessed Child Foundation, which is a, a, um, a charitable foundation um, offering a sort of home from home in Kampala for children who live outside Kampala who were traveling back and forth on a, on, um, a regular basis for treatment would be impossible. So th that's been incredibly effective. And I think as they feel that it has helped in terms of reducing abandonment of treatment just because the families can stay um, 
in, in, the, in the place. So we, we came back with lots of plans at that stage. We'd sat for the last day with the Ugandan team. Um, the things that they really, really wanted to work together on were chemotherapy safety, and that was all around prescription and administration of chemotherapy. They wanted some pathology support because their turnaround time for pathology is somewhere in the region of six weeks plus, which for many children who present often quite late in diagnosis was too long to be um, very helpful in terms of managing their, their treatment. They they'd seen um, some of the parent information we use in Cambridge and wanted to develop something similar in Uganda, mainly because the number of staff they have is so small, so being able to give um, parents things to look at and to read was going to be helpful. And the nurses wanted education and support. And one of them said to me, we don't know what we don't know. But then COVID happened. Um, and that really did impact hugely on, on the progress we could make. So initially we set up some virtual meetings which were very well attended and we made great progress early on in the COVID pandemic when actually people were still able to function reasonably well. They carried out an audit of 50 patients coming in through outpatients and inpatients, looking at prescribing and administration and identified areas for improvement. Those were really around um, fluid management, supported medication, and actually being able to provide a sort of audit trail to make sure that children received a full course of treatment and didn't receive only one out of five drugs. Um, during that time, we had a fantastic pharmacist, Shona, who um, joined the group in Uganda and has been really instrumental in, making, in forging ahead with progress. And then we set about developing four emergency protocols with associated fluid and supportive medicines. And they were emergency protocols because, as I said, the turnaround time for pathology was six to eight weeks. And for many children who presented late uh, and with quite advanced disease, they couldn't wait to start treatment. And there was a rather ad hoc picking out a protocol to start them on pending a diagnosis. So we tried to streamline that and to, to set criteria for diagnosis of the most likely diagnosis and to use an appropriate protocol, prescription and protocol. Um, but we parked the nurse education. That was because we found that there was a nurse education program that was run by the nursing group within SEOP, which is the International Society of Pediatric um, Oncology, that UCI were involved with, and that was really gaining momentum, so we just parked that but we lost momentum. And we lost momentum for lots of reasons, but COVID was certainly a major issue because having managed virtual meetings very, fairly regularly as COVID took off in both institutions, the amount of time for, for virtual meetings um, dropped off. We missed quite a few meetings and just keeping the momentum was difficult. So we agreed that we needed to have another meeting face-to-face <laughs> uh, -face. And we had a, an aborted attempt in November um, because of Ebola that was delayed till March uh, 2023. And we went out then for a week and Emmy Dickens and Gemma Barnard uh, joined me. We had a very productive week. It was hard work, long hours, but what we spent a lot of time was trying to enthuse the team to, to work together closely to work, try and iron out some of the difficulties that we'd had over um, virtual meetings and really to try and pin down issues that we needed to work out face to face and work out how we were going to move forward. And I think we kept, all came away and actually it was a very positive end to our time there that we had developed better trust, better working relationships and a clear route forward for where we were going to go next. So we came back with plans. First of all, we had ironed out, we, we hoped, all of the issues that the nurses and, and medical staff had around using the emergency protocols. We'd sat and worked through them all individually, represented them, and worked with the pharmacist in, uh, in Uganda, Shona, some of the nursing team, to really embed those. And we left saying, well, let's work with those for two or three months, make sure you're absolutely happy before we move on. And then the plan was to progress to protocols uh, to the other WHO, Global Initiative Cancers, and I'll come back to that in a minute. They were really keen to continue parent education, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. To establish a nursing group, not necessarily for education, but for sharing ideas, for sharing practice, 
and to try and link pathology in some way to try and reduce the turnaround time for paediatric pathology. Oh, so just um, talking a little bit more about the WHO Global Initiative tumours, as, as Sue has already mentioned, there are about 400,000 new cases of childhood cancer each year, of which 90% occur in low- and middle-income countries, where the survival is less than 30% in comparison to the survival of greater than 80% in high-income countries. And this prompted the WHO and a number of organisations to pull together this framework called Cure All Framework, which was set out to look at all the issues around why the survival was so poor, everything from late presentation um, to delayed diagnosis to misdiagnosis to problems giving access in chemotherapy to supportive care to abandonment, etc., and then try and work through some of these things to improve survival. And the aim is that by um, 2030, that for the commonest, most treatable, curable conditions that the survival figures in low- and middle-income countries should have increased to at least 60%. So to move on to parent information, um, this actually started in 2020. Two lovely medical students, Max and Jess, went out to Uganda for their elective, and they worked with the team in CUH, the team in Uganda, and parents of children with cancer to develop a What is Cancer booklet which, is, which was um, pulled together while they were there and then was illustrated and printed by um, the medical illustration department in Milago Hospital. And we were lucky enough to be able to collect that and, and dispense it when we were there in, in, in um, March 2023. They've remained completely committed despite the fact they've now left Ca Cambridge and are working in the Oxford Deanery. They've just about to publish the next one, which is around treatment of cancer, and they've got two other um, titles ready to go. Um, so that's, I think, been a, a, a great um, success. At the moment, it is only in English, but the, the Ugandan Children's Cancer Foundation is looking to actually translate this into a number of African languages. The nursing project has just got off the ground, so um, here we have Lindsay and Joe, two of our nurses, who are working with Mariam and Susan in Uganda. And what they wanted to do was start looking at developing standard policies and procedures to try and develop some standardization within uh, the nursing practice. They're starting with a couple of them, triaging for patients attending the emergency unit, and then a resuscitation um, policy. There was also been discussion about starting a monthly journal club and case presentation meeting so that they can share um, practice across um, both sites. In terms of pathology, a bit of a bigger nut to crack, um, but we're absolutely delighted that Philip, who is one of the East of England paediatric trainees, was appointed to a global health fellowship. Uh, he's got extensive experience in global health already, um, but he is hoping to start a project in uh, pathology to try and reduce the turnaround time. Um, he spent some time in the pathology department here looking at the practices of what happens from surgery through to reporting um, and is just, has just communicated with the Ugandan team. We're hopefully setting up a virtual meeting in the first instance and hopefully he will go out in um, early next year. Quite how the project's going to um, progress is unclear, but it's likely to be some sort of audit of where they're at at the moment and then to look to, at areas that could be improved. Now, it would be wrong to say there haven't been challenges. There have been many challenges, um, as in any area of medicine, I think. Not, it doesn't need to be global health. Um, so particularly difficult through, the, um, through and then post-pandemic in terms of maintaining momentum. Virtual meetings are fantastic and should be part of the way we work, but they're often very difficult with internet connections. We never see the person we're talking to because they can't have camera and... Um, audio on at the same time and frequently they come in and leave and come in and leave because of the um, internet connections. There are time constraints for all on both sides. Um, they are extremely busy in terms of the number of patients they have and, um, and the number of staff they have and actually just finding time in everybody's diary to make sure these happen uh, is tricky. 
I really believe face-to-face -face needs to be there, not all the time, but a couple of times a year really to develop trust and a working relationship. You can do that face-to-face -face and you can never do it through a voice on a computer screen, really. And I think the other challenge we need to be aware of is there are lots of ideas, there's lots of enthusiasm, but we need to keep some sort of focus, prioritise and make sure that we achieve at the end of it all. But I think, positively, we do feel there is some teamwork and trust that's been re-established and friendships that have been forged. Um, we're trying to establish ways of working now. The team is expanding to make better use of time, so to have smaller working groups around particular areas. We're working towards some of the UCI team visiting Cambridge, hopefully next year. And what's really great is to have such a broad group of people involved in partnering with UCI. Um, which really brings enthusiasm from medical students, doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, pharmacists. Um, the, the, the team continues to expand. So as the Ugandan nurses said to me back in 2020, where there's a will, there is a way. Um, and so finally, I just want to thank all our partners in Uganda, particularly Joyce Kambugu, who is the clinical lead, uh, Shona, the our pharmacist, and then Susan, Mariam and Isaac are the main nurses involved, but that's expanding all the time to the Ugandan Children's Cancer Foundation, who were great with Max and Jess in terms of getting, um, the, getting parents involved in giving feedback of what was needed in the booklet. And as I've said already, we hope they're going to be involved in translating the booklet into other African languages. The Blessed Child Foundation for really keeping many of the children on treatment and getting them through their treatment. To the team at CUH within Pediatric Oncology, so Certainly, um, Emmy, Gemma, um, Joe, our pharmacist, um, the nurses, everybody that's been involved has been tremendous and very enthusiastic. But I also want to mention the university, and particularly Suzanne Turner and Marta, who've been doing a Burkitt lymphoma study in Uganda and have been fantastic in being able to point us in the right direction when we're not sure who to navigate certain things through. So they've been a great um, uh, source of, of knowledge and expertise. And last but not least, Evelyn and the team at CGHP, uh, without whom none of this would happen. They've been supportive throughout. I feel really privileged to have been involved in a lot of the global health work, and I only wish that I'd had the time and opportunity to do more of it earlier in my career, not at the end. <laughs> Thank you.